We're live. All right, is it broadcasting sideways? It is. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are live on YouTube. We haven't done this for a long, long time. Um, just hold tight for like one minute while we organize our electronics here. So we just hit the live button. Uh, we have to now pull up the same live stream on this guy so we can see your comments. Um, and then, yeah. And then we're ready to go. I think everyone experiences this. <laughs> Come out and see. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> oh, that looks great. So a little inception here. We can see ourselves. <laughs> check our, our picture and our audio. I think our audio sounded really good. So that is excellent. But um, you can let us know in the comments if it is not good. And we will try to check it out. Okay, now we are all situated. Yeah. We're situated <laughs> <laughs> in all kinds of ways. Um, first, uh, let's talk about who we are. So we are, for those who are maybe tuning in brand new, don't know what our story is, I'll do a quick like one minute recap. Um, we are Sailing Panda. I'm Darren. I'm Amanda. And we've been sailing around the world for one and a half years now. We left Florida uh, last February and we've sailed since across the North Atlantic um, to Greenland, to Scotland, Ireland, UK, France, um, Portugal, Spain, and we are now sitting in the Balearics. So um, yeah, and we'll, we'll update you a little bit more on the passage and all that. but. That's a short synopsis of who we are and what we're doing. Um, next thing is I have to thank everyone who supports us. Um, just recently, in the last like two months, we started Patreon, and the response has been overwhelming. Yeah. Could not imagine <laughs> the number of supporters we have, the number of people tuning into our journey who really want to help us out. Um, it is is more empowering than you can ever know not just from a monetary standpoint but from like this emotional push to like keep pushing hard to keep doing our journey right to like yeah when things get really tough it's like it's not like we're not alone yeah it makes you feel very uh connected to other people and hearing their stories and why they want to contribute it's just it's really amazing uh, thank you so much to our patrons it's been very uh, very helpful for us and connected. Yep, absolutely. Um, and we met like all kinds of cool people through Patreon, like yeah. all around the world who've, who've, who've seen our content and tuned in and, and now we get to hear their story and have a really cool interaction. So, um, so if you're totally haven't heard about Patreon, go check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash sailing panda or just search it. You'll find it. Um, and you can check that out. Uh, we'd also like to thank everyone who's done like one-time contributions through our PayPal, like bought us beer, bought us fish and chips when yeah. we're in England. Um, people We've enjoyed even, it. People That's even true. brought us beer. Like, yeah, that is oh, just, it means the world to us. Sailing here, like kind of around the world, you feel a bit alone, but we have all of you out there to like help uh, help support us and push us. So yeah, it's amazing. Yes. And last, thanks to all of our family who support us back home for doing this crazy journey now for a year and a half. Yeah, it's been very uh, disconnected from family and friends, but we love you guys and we can't wait to see you one day either here or back home. And uh, I know now with travel restrictions ending, and we are in quite a nice spot, so any of those friends and family who want to come jump on board. Yeah, <laughs> always welcome. <laughs> okay, um, we have like a whole agenda here. So the next thing on our agenda is dun, 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 update for Panda's injury. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, maybe some of you have followed us on Facebook or Instagram, we kind of spur of the moment showed that July 4th, we didn't have such a great day. We had a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, Amanda had to go to the ER uh, in, in Formentera, actually, and it was, uh, I ended up jumping into the water and landing on a rope that was connected to our game. Like that. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the rope went to places that she'd rather not have gone? Yeah, I'd rather not even discuss it. Some people get a little queasy talking about it. <laughs> but nonetheless, an injury happened. Some stitches were needed uh, the next day. Yeah. And so. uh, all is good now. So. Yeah, I've been healing really nicely. Um, I got the help I needed uh, efficiently and we were, I actually went on a swim just yesterday. It had it had been like two weeks since I'd been in the water. Uh, everything's feeling great. And uh, thank you for everyone who reached out to me and was thinking of me during that time. It was pretty traumatic <laughs> and I'm feeling a lot better. It was, yeah, it was super traumatic, but, um, and it was also really, just really interesting, like side note, just trying to uh, navigate like a medical system abroad. Um, yeah. You know, we were trying to do like kind of emergency clinic thing that didn't quite work out, but we just went to a hospital ER and they treated us like fantastic. It was, it was excellent. I mean, yeah. ultimately the doctor there didn't want to do anything. He wanted to leave it to a specialist, but he booked the appointment right in the morning, the next morning, we went to the specialist. They yeah. did the stitches. I mean, we were in, you were in and out in like 20 minutes. It was super fast. It was really quick, and the ladies uh, felt very sim sympathetic for me, so they were really comforting. And uh, I've never had stitches before, so that was definitely my first as well. Uh, that's a really weird way to get a first stitches story. It'll be a great cruising story now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe we can discuss it further over some beers. Other than that, we won't get into any detail. I'm feeling well, and hopefully we'll get to diving again soon. That's right, yeah, scuba diving. Okay, so, da da da, -da. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, where are we now, Panda? We are in Mallorca. Uh, this is Soyer. It's on the north coast of Mallorca. Beautiful town. And it is sunset right now, which is about, we're really close to sun setting. It's really beautiful. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to pull up a map right now. Um, so uh, we use, uh, for those who want to follow our journey, we used to use a live tracking thing, um, but we don't use that anymore. So if you go to our Instagram bio. Yes, we have a little link tree. It's not link tree. It's um doesn't matter. It's anyway, a page that gives you a, a bunch page, of links to things that we page. do. It's called Flow Page. And we've set it up. We have, we kind of disconnected our tracking from our satellite phone. And now we are using what's called noforeignland.com. And a few other cruisers have used it. We like it so far. It's really interactive. We'd like to see what you guys think as well. So maybe uh, if you could check that out or tell us if you already use it, come check us out on No Foreign Land. Yeah, it's a, it's a good tracking site. We can also be a little more interactive. We can show, we can post our YouTube videos, like where they actually happened. So you can just see our path and click the video, like right there, you know, up, okay, you can see our path in Greenland, click the video and watch it, so that's pretty neat. Yeah, or we can connect to like photos that we've taken in certain anchorages and uh, people have uploaded different recommendations based on where they've gone. Yeah. So, really cool. Uh, so since we did our last live stream, it was a couple months ago, and we were in chilly South England, and we were really looking forward to some warm weather. And here we are. We are in shorts, t-shirts, swimming in the water. Uh, the water is 27C, the air is 27C. Uh, that's about 80F for, for everyone else, and it's just fantastic. It is uh, quite a treat to be in some warm water. But since then, I mean, how did we get here? We had to sail across the English Channel. Yep. We had to sail down the Brittany coast of France. We had to cross the Bay of Biscay. Yeah. And then we ended up in Portugal, where we stayed just like a week and enjoyed the warmer weather. And we were aiming towards the Mediterranean. We had to go across the killer whale or orca alley, which that was really, really terrifying. Whoa, 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 whoa. Explain why is that terrifying? Well, what is it? All right, so there have been a lot of orca attacks lately uh, around Barbate, um, Spain, and in Gibraltar. For it actually it goes all the way up the coast, but more recently, just in that closer to Gibraltar area. If you haven't looked at look it up, it's been really scary for a lot of cruisers to just make that jump from 
like Portugal into Gibraltar. Cause... Oh, wait, I'll, I'll pause it. The, the orca attack isn't on people. Like the people oh. are fine. So I'm... what what the orcas are doing is they're attacking boats. Uh, they're specifically biting the rudders, especially like on sailboats. Have a nice big rudder. Apparently, it looks really delicious for them. Yeah. And they play around with the boat and the rudder. Um, and so you get all these sailboats that have broken rudders and essentially that leaves you dead in the water um, yeah. and you end up calling a coast guard and they tow you into the nearest port lift you out of the water and now you have a rudder repair yeah they don't know why they're doing this they could be getting back at people who knows what it is <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're very scared most people most cruisers are very scared of that jump because it just destroys your boat and I mean, you just never thought that we would come all this way and then be scared of, of orcas. I know, of all the different dangers that we have as sailors, um, never did we believe orcas would be a thing. So no. they are now, and uh, yeah, but we made it through. Um, and luckily, like we didn't hear any other ships around us uh, have any calls or any confrontations with orcas. Um, we did have some, one of our closest friends, Sailing Sonder, they just sailed through a few weeks ago, and they had a ship within a five mile range, I think, of them yeah. have their rudder attacked, and they had to be towed into port. It was a smaller sailboat, but um, yeah, very scary, very scary times right now sailing through Gibraltar and the southern coast of, uh, of, of Portugal. There. Yeah, it's a hot topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about. I want to. I want to back up and just talk about some highlights of the sailing that we have been doing. So I jumped all the way from England to here, um, English Channel. What was it like? That was a great passage. Oh my gosh, we had like put twenty knots of breeze on the beam the whole way. One of our fastest passages that we almost beat our twenty-four hour time. It's one hundred sixty. Uh, yeah, we, we, I think our record right now for 24 hour time is 178 miles and I think we did like 165 or something. We were pretty close. It was really close. Yeah, it was super fast. We were just screaming across the oh, channel. Great sail. Yeah. We, did, we actually got there early. We thought we were going to get there late, like late in the evening or late in the afternoon rather. And then we beat them there and yeah. Yeah, so we landed in Brest. Um, Brest was super easy to do all of our check-in wasn't too bad even with the travel restrictions now at the time uh, yeah. if you're traveling from the UK it was okay we did our COVID tests in the UK mm -hmm. um, but the customs official didn't even look at our COVID tests so stamped our passports we were in the there EU again. so that was good and then we spent the next month essentially cruising the Brittany coast of France that's the yeah. northern Atlantic coast and we had a really good time um, there was some lockdown still happening so we couldn't do a lot of social activities but we could see a lot of like beautiful sights, scenery, and really cool. What are some of the highlights for you? Uh, the wine and the cheese. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> Baguettes, uh, croissants, like everything. Uh, the food is just delicious. So we really enjoyed the food and the wine. <laughs> um, restaurants weren't open at the time, so we didn't get to dine. Um, but the coastline is just really gorgeous. It was still a little cold even up there really didn't change much temperature wise so we were still walking around in like pants t-shirt jacket and did a lot of hiking but otherwise it was pretty locked down so. okay so your favorite highlight was wine and baguettes my favorite highlight was seeing where our boat was made we stopped in La Rochelle at the Amel factory, yeah, we and had we got to. to see where Panda Boat was molded, was created, that was, really was shipped from. Um, they're obviously, the Amel factory is still big in business. Um, I mean, the, our boat was made 40 years ago, and a lot of shipyards are pretty much closed from that era, but Amel is one that did survive, and they survived in a big way. They're still making some of the best world cruising oh, yeah. uh, ocean yachts available. And it was it was great the reception we got. I mean, even though we own this like smaller, older Amel, um, we felt like we were part of the family. Yeah, they were really nice at, so at nice. giving us a full tour of the factory, and they were just happy to to kind of um, yeah, I guess show us what a new how a new Amel was built. Which... And of course, we were just nerding out on everything. <laughs> That's <laughs> so. right. And we also toured another factory. We toured um, Pogo Pogo Structures. Um, they're a much smaller shipyard. 
not known for making cruising boats, but they're known for making racing sailboats. And they do make a, a line of kind of really fast cruisers, but um, it was also great touring that boat. We toured specifically a Pogo 36 mm -hmm. and toured that factory. And it was really cool to see kind of how like a modern, advanced, um, lightweight sailing boat is made. Yeah. Um, like a Pogo is a performance boat. It'll plane at like 15 knots of true wind. Um, it goes really, really fast, uh, really well. Yeah, so. Darren really likes the Pogos. He really wants to try one out. Oh yeah, I can't wait. That would be really, really neat to sail one. So we day. nerded out about going to different boat yards. That was about it. Yeah, that was yeah. great. So then uh, we left France and we sailed across the Bay of Biscay, which was super great for us. Um, the winds yeah. were set for spinnaker weather for the first two days, and then after that. We had some nasty fronts come through and I think just typical ocean bad weather, yeah. um, but we really pushed hard. We sailed through it um, as best we could and and got into the Portuguese trade winds. And oh. what were those like? Those are amazing. Those was like downwind the whole time. We were with people called goose wing or wing on wing the whole time. That's like 20 knots. It just didn't change. We hadn't sailed in consistent winds for since the Bahamas. I know, so we had three days of sailing downwind with 10 to 25 knots directly behind us. Yeah. We didn't have to change a thing for three days. It was getting easier and easier to sail again. And yeah. then like the layers were shedding as we were going down. It's like, getting nice and warm as we were heading south. Yeah, it was really spectacular to not have to wear galleys again. <laughs> and then we rounded the Portuguese coast and we went into Porto Mayo spent a few uh spent like a week there just really enjoyed the warm weather the somewhat warm water the water was still a little chilly but i was able to get in and scrape the carpet yeah. off the bottom of panda boat because we hadn't scraped her cleaned her hull or anything for um pretty much half a year since we were like in bermuda last um i was really shocked at um how slow we were the last passage, that passage we were just talking about. Yeah. We were at least a not slower average, which is like huge for us. Um, and sure enough, I get in the water, get under there, and there's like a solid two inch carpet of grass. Yeah. Luckily it's all just soft growth. There wasn't any hard growth, um, but it took uh, about three to four hours of me under the boat in full scuba gear, like several tanks full, yep. to, uh, to get the bottom pretty decently clean. Once we landed here in the Balearics, uh, we both then scraped, 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 and yeah. now the bottom is looking fantastic. It's almost looking like brand new again. Yeah, because your first sessions down there were just like trimming uh, like a lawn, and then it would just be just this small, and then <laughs> we would go back down there and have to actually like buffer it out with these thick uh, Brillo pad type sponges to actually get the rest of it off. It was really in there. It was, yeah. <laughs> So, and then we left Puerto Mayo, we sailed through uh, Orca Alley and through the Gibraltar, um, Gibraltar Cut, which is a really spectacular moment for a sailor because when you go through the Strait of Gibraltar, you have Europe on your port side and you have Africa on your starboard side. Yeah. So you have Spain and Gibraltar, which interestingly, side note, Gibraltar is a British territory. Uh, it's like a small, the rock of Gibraltar, it's like um, kind of a little peninsula and that city is British territory, which is interesting. And then on the other side, on the African side, you have Morocco, and you have these two dichotomies, you're sailing right through the middle, uh, heading right into the Mediterranean, current is going with you, sometimes against you, depending on where you're at. Um, we had a nice uh, wind pushing us into the Med, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then there's a ton of traffic, like I, we have not seen that many uh, big tankers and cargo ships in our lives and different kinds like one had wind turbine blades on it The other one had livestock. It was just had cows. Yeah. yeah, it looked like a prison for cows It did it was kind of weird. Yeah, describe that a bit <laughs> So the instead of having the containers on the top of the deck, it was like jail cells for cows <laughs> Just a cage full of cows Really weird. So strange. Really weird to see that on the anyway, tanker. That's the only reason I'm highlighting it because it was these weird moments where you're like, what kind of ship is that? And you hadn't seen it before. The There's these huge sections all the way down in our journey that are just called traffic separation zones and we would be on the outskirts of them, but because you don't want to really go into them. You have to get approvals 
and there's just so much traffic you don't have to deal with them especially at night so and of course we're always going through them near the night <laughs> so you have a ton of traffic and you're trying to maneuver your little boat through and you see all these big giant tankers coming through yeah so, it was really special definitely a sight to see it's like a huge highway uh, and, and then once we got through there we we're into the med we had a good like trade wind kind of pushing us in i could call it a trade wind is the levante is the one no. that pushes you in or a the levante i think goes out goes out okay so it's so the opposite of the levante wind goes out. but for the first two days we just had winds directly behind us that was super great um, and then we got a wind from the south, which brought a bunch oh of gosh. Sahara dust. So we had red dust coating the boat everywhere. It looked like we sailed through kind of like a, a mud storm. Yeah. And it, it rained, but it wouldn't quite rain. It would just like a light drop here or there. But it um, would drizzle and then it'd just be like red mud all over the boat. So it just kept getting worse and worse. I think Panda became red afterwards and we became red we it was, also became it was very red. interesting so um, when you're trying to go up to the deck and change like do anything at the main mast i'm just like covered in mud <laughs> yeah that was uh that was fascinating so it's weird um but then we made it right to the balearics um landed in formentera had an excellent time instantly playing in the water um we landed actually like at like a nude beach area which was uh, I think perfect for us because we had been wearing fallies and, and, and clothes for the last year so it was all clothes off jump in the water tan like it was just a culture enjoying. shock as well because when you're alone on the ocean for like well, for us it was maybe five days uh -huh. so was, then all of a sudden you come and there's tons of boats because it's in season summer in the Balearics and then like a catamaran comes by with a naked chick on the bow and you're like hi and they're like hi and like okay like so this is the thing this yep. is the thing here and you have to be okay with it so we're like all right we can get down with this um and after we settled down and we instantly uh enjoyed underwater activities right yes meaning scuba diving yeah <laughs> Tell us about the scuba diving. Yeah, so uh, what was our, our first dive was on the north side. Yeah, our first dive was on the north side of Ibiza, actually. We found this, I don't remember the name anymore, but there is a really small cala, and we were the only boat. We were actually able to dive from Panda. We just swam over and then dived down, and there was like the rock structures and there were a ton of small little fish, kind of like reef fish, a ton of starfish. We saw an octopus, like nudibranch or a sea slug, whichever one you want to call it. And we, it was just different than what we had seen before, so we were really intrigued. Even though it might not be as colorful as, as the Caribbean, but it's definitely something different. There was more life than we actually thought there would be, and we hadn't been scuba diving in probably uh, over a year well besides cleaning the boat <laughs> so it felt so good to get all of our dive gear out get our tanks on just like use that gear get underwater breathe underwater again and to be able to do it together that was uh, that was fantastic and so the it, water is super clear here like visibility for like over 100 feet so we pretty much spent the next three weeks diving as much as possible so between the work that we do with video editing and the normal boat maintenance and provisioning uh, we would just go out to a dive site, dive, dive, dive as much as we can. And uh, yeah, we really enjoy scuba diving here again. It's, yeah. it's been fantastic. And since my injury, like I haven't, we haven't gone scuba diving in a couple of weeks, but we did uh, two and three dives, or four dives actually, that were really incredible afterwards. And we hope to share with you eventually on YouTube as well. That's right. So uh, let's get back to our agenda here. Um, I want to talk about our upgrade update. So in England, we did a bunch of boat upgrades. So I'm just going to be really, really quick on this. So for people who are boat nerds, really interested in the work that we did on the boat, um, we installed dinghy davits. It's a two thumbs up for dinghy davits. Yeah, definitely on dinghy davits. Okay, four thumbs up for dinghy davits. However, uh, dinghy davits are a thing that, that hang the dinghy off of the back of the boat, off the transom of the boat. 
and that has been excellent for launching the dinghy and recovering the dinghy. Mm -hmm. We can do it just one person now if we wanted. So if Amanda, in theory, wanted to go for a walk by herself, she can just mm -hmm. just launch the dinghy and go. Yeah, um, it's really easy. Yeah, that's been awesome. Uh, I have a little technical problems. The the blocks that we mounted it on, um, they're starting to crack. So we have yeah. some, and then the welds at some of the mounts are, are starting to crack too. So really stressing the, the mounts. So we have some uh, some work to do later. But overall, the setup is good, and yeah. we went with a new dinghy, went with a high field tender, and a little bit smaller because we had to go smaller with the width of our boat. The new tender has been fantastic. It's luxurious. It has a seat, it has padding, it has like a gas fuel locker, bow locker thing. Flat bottom. It so is. much easier to get in and out of. Yeah. Um, it's so big plug okay. for the high field tender. They're not like sponsoring us or anything. We, mm -hmm. we bought a tender as normal people would. Um, but it really, the high field tender is, I'd say probably one of the best cruising inflatable ribs out there. They've yeah. really thought of all these like little details that you that you think of when you are cruising. Mm -hmm. The only downside to it, well, there's, there's, a, there's a few downsides, but one downside is it is pretty heavy. So you have to have decent davits to, to, to hoist it and, and work with it. And we also mounted our max, the maximum um, horsepower engine, uh, 15 horsepower, two stroke. So that's really maxing out the weight on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it works great. That our, our concern or our design criteria for our tender is it needs to be able to plane, so get on plane with two people and, and all dive gear, which dive gear can be quite heavy. So two tanks, all the BCs, and then all the safety gear that we, we take with that. And with the last three weeks of constant diving, we've proven that yeah. works just fine. So we can get on plane and we can go far and, and really adventure far away from Panda underwater, which is awesome. The last update we have is our solar panels. We want this, these like really flat, uh, flexible glue onto the boat kind of solar panels. They're from a company called Solbian out of Italy and they have been fantastic. Um, they're still producing tons and tons of electricity as they should. We're also in the med now. We're closer to the sun as we're further south. It's summertime. It never gets cloudy here. It doesn't even rain. So we are making way more electricity than we can actually use. Even when we're doing our scuba dive tank refills, yeah. um, we recharge the batteries really quick. And we, we have the alternator as well. Yes, yeah, so we also installed the Balmar alternator on the engine. That's been fantastic too. Um, so yeah, we've. I, I hate to like complain, but we've been in excess energy for like a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even when we were motoring the other day to get to our latest Anchorage, where I made some beans, because we can. Like, we have so <laughs> much energy, and it's like, why not make something in the Cali? Right. So, so all those updates have been really, really great. Um, we hope to release uh, some videos about them. I've, I've shot a video about, like, our scuba tank set, or our dive compressor setup. Um, I still need to edit and get that out. I want to do another one on our dinghy review to actually like, yeah. do a whole review video like we did with the last dinghy. And then I need to do another review video on the solar and show yeah, how awesome that's been. So um, those will all come when we have a hot minute, but right now we've been so freaking busy. It's like yeah. every day we're either like sailing or doing something or editing. So um, yeah, I hope soon we'll, we'll have some slower time. Yeah. Um, so that's it on the upgrade list. Uh, the next question we have is where to? I'll leave that to you, Panda. Where are we going? We have no idea still. We have... Uh, okay, that's it for this section. We have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we have to get out. We're, we have American passports, so we have to get out of the Schengen uh, zone, or all the countries that are part of Schengen. And, that, and so that means we have to get out of Spain, which is where we are now. And we have to either go to like Tunisia, which is too hot for summer, <laughs> Turkey, uh, Albania, um, Montenegro or Montenegro, Croatia. Croatia. Those are kind of on our list. So we we'll either shoot for probably Turkey or Croatia, um, depending on some scheduling things. But yeah. um, so stay we're going... tuned. We don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you think we where we should go. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <laughs> Eastern Med though, that that's definitely where we're heading. Because so we so we have about another thousand to fifteen hundred miles of sailing ahead of us uh, to get all the way to that side of the Med. Uh, fun fact for those who haven't looked at a map in a while, yeah. the whole Mediterranean is actually really really big. So if you take 
from Gibraltar, kind of the entrance on the west side, all the way to the, um, uh, what's the... Um, Al Algerian, yeah. What's the strait called? The Suez Canal? Oh, yeah. So all the way from the Suez Canal, it kind of marks the eastern side of the Mediterranean. That is pretty much the width of the whole United States. It's like two or 3,000 nautical miles. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so in our sail, we're essentially sailing across the United States, and we're only about in the range of like Colorado. <laughs> so we have some, some good miles to do still. Um, yeah, it's been 34 minutes of Sorry. your time Talk and our time. Ear. I know, we've definitely talked your guys' ear off. So let's open it up for any questions. Um, we have, uh, I see a stream of questions here and comments, so we want to go through them and address them as best we can. So looking on this list, we have lots of people saying hello and everything's looking good. Um, let me pick up the first question. Um, where have they been making you wear masks around people? So in Spain, right now, yeah, you go ahead and give it a break. In oh, Spain right now, up, outside, right? you don't have to wear a mask, uh, only on uh, public transport and when you're in um, in areas that you can't socially distance um, inside. Yeah. So like if you go into the restaurant, you have to wear a mask, but when you're at the table, don't have to. Um, everything's really open here right now, which is really great. You don't even feel like there's COVID sometimes because it's really, tourism is just booming. That's right. Um, let's see a question here from, oh, SV Betty Sue. That's my cousin, um, Mark and, um, huh? Uh, yeah, this is my cousin uh, Robert and Jen on SB Betty Sue. They have a new sailing channel, actually a YouTube channel. He asks, uh, did Rocco find a new home? So Rocco was our old tender. He did. And yes, Rocco did find a new home. We found him a new owner in England. So he's going to be spending his life up in the chilly waters of the Solent. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see other questions. I don't think we have really any other questions. Oh, Annika uh, is asking about a food. Tell us about the food. Here? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. food well, here is fantastic. We really enjoyed um, getting chorizo from and the cured meats, the bierco, any cured meats that are in the stores. Um, that's a real makes a really good uh, appetizer for entertaining. Also, we had, Darren had his first paella dish. It's not my first, but paella in Spain, oh, it's delicious. Oh my gosh. Fantastic, <laughs> yeah. I'm a big fan of paella, so I'm glad we're here to experience that. Yeah. Absolutely. So we had a good sunset on Ibiza, and paella for dinner, sangria, beers, everything is really delicious here. That's right. Next question is from Mark Singleton. Are you thinking about eventually going through the Suez Canal? No. No. Um, for the main reason of piracy, on the other side of that, uh, you have Somalia and some other bad countries that have a ton of piracy, especially on towards small ships. So it's not that you can't do it. You can definitely do it. Um, the safest way to do it, if you are sailors out there and you're thinking about doing the Suez, is you go with a group uh, or you can hire a private kind of like... Um, uh, like convoy, a convoy, not convoy, but... Um, a um, security yeah. se security service so they follow you like a convoy of boats um, and they are armed it's an armed security service to get you through that part uh, we're not interested in all that we still want to go to brazil and go around cape horn and then go up to the south pacific where we're still trying to go to go scuba yeah, diving went the wrong way yep so um yeah mark says don't blame you one bit i was just curious yes uh, and yeah a lot of sailboats are still doing it which is yeah pretty awesome pretty awesome i mean i wish we could do it that's for sure um let's see i think that's really it for the questions we have a lot of great comments here about just people tuning in from all over the world which wow. is awesome sv1 life with chris rushing saying oh. hello hello one life we ran into them um, in the middle of the Atlantic. So that was pretty yeah. neato. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So um, someone, Alex Mitt says, Kornadi Island in Croatia should be a rewarding destination. 
and yep, and then we can go to Greece afterwards. And yeah, we're looking forward yeah. to Greece for sure. And then um, Gabriel says, "Oh yes, to Cape Horn." I think. I mean, it's a it's a hell of a challenge from a sailing perspective, but never mind for newbie sailors. It would be quite, I think, uh, extraordinary to see that part of the world. So yeah, and we really want to go to Patagonia, Chile. So. Yeah, maybe one last foray and some some cold water. So yeah, we'll keep our cold weather gear a little bit longer just for that. <laughs> All right, well, if there's no other questions, I think we'll sign off and so we don't waste the rest of your Saturday. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Sailing Panda's live chat. Yeah. We hope to do this a little more regularly. I know I said that like two months ago and I kind of dropped the ball and I never did anything, but here we are, here we are live. Um, if you can comment about what kind of topics you want to hear next, um, I specifically love talking about different topics. We did one on budgets, we did one on boat upgrades, we did one on Greenland. Um, so yeah, if you want to hear uh, about a certain topic or you have questions for us, just ask. All right, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you around. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. Go over here now. Yeah, really turn it off. <laughs> How do you stop it?